Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp of the Limp, and I'm here with a review for Sea Power Naval Combat in the Missile Age. This is a game that is coming out, is being released by Microprose, and it's either out or right there getting out. It just depends on when I get uh, this video up. Obviously, it's a game about naval combat, and it's set in the, the Coldish War era, you know, 60s to the 80s time frame. So all the, the cool ships and missiles and aircraft carriers and submarines and all the stuff that was going on during that time, that's what you've got to play with here. If you've played Cold Waters previously and you like that game, you're probably going to like this. This... Uh, and it kind of flirts that line between simulation and game. It's very in-depth if the item, if the aircraft, if the submarine, if the surface vessel, whatever it is, was capable of something. Generally, it's going to be included in this game. So you've got all that cool stuff like radar, missiles, heat seekers, torpedoes, all that is going on with this. But there's a little bit of a curve getting into this. Before we get into the specifics of gameplay, let me address very quickly the the minutia, the the mechanics of it, right? So the the graphics, the sound, uh, all the uh, the stability of the platform, no glitches. Haven't found any as of yet. Possibly one, but I can't tell if it's user error or a glitch. So I'm not kind of including it yet I'll, I'll touch base on that one later uh the, the graphics are great the uh, the sound is good uh definitely serviceable i think the graphics are actually better than i was originally anticipating you can crank them up pretty high but for a game like this you don't have to have a hugely powerful rig to get some decent looking graphics out of it now it's it's not going to wow you you're not going to be dealing with ray tracing and all this other you know crap the the highest of high end all that stuff because this is more of an rts you're kind of back from it you're controlling from a top down view whatever vehicle it is that you're in control of or battle group at that time but it is rather easy to make water effects look good in video games without having to put too much of an effort into it and this takes place at sea now i have found that the land right the land aspects they do look rather plain, but most of your combat's taking place at sea. You do attack some land targets, but the, the stuff that you're dealing with the most does look good. The sound is uh, definitely serviceable for the game as well. Uh, I always keep the music cranked down because I'm usually recording anyway, so I won't comment on the music, but the sound itself, missiles, fire, guns, you know, miniguns, you know, uh, tearing off uh, jets zooming by the ship engine as it's churning through the water uh, it's all relative depending on how far or close you are from the uh, object you can zoom in or or pull it back just depending on what your view is and the, the sound adjusts as you do that so what do you do in this game well like i said this is a, an rts ish uh, type game where you're going to be able to select through a set of scenarios or you do have the ability to do like a mission editor thing. Now I haven't dug too deep into the mission editor but from my time poking around at it it does appear to be rather extensive. You can do a lot with this mission editor. All the different vehicles uh, everything from including rafts and tanks to aircraft carriers are included in this mission editor. You can add in individual units or you can add in battle groups. You can have uh, triggers that uh, pop off in your mission. You know, if this, then that. Uh, control the weather, the, the enemies, the location, the whole world's available to you. So the the depth for the mission editor is, is fairly deep. You can create probably any mission that you could think of you can create with this mission editor i would anticipate that you're probably going to start seeing a fair amount of user created missions popping up on uh, things like steam so make sure you check that out because while there are a decent amount of scenarios that are included in the game 
from what I've seen just starting out. Now remember, mine's a, a preview copy, so I don't know exactly what the finalized early access version is going to have, but there is a, a, a decent amount. But I think we're really going to see some longevity to the game from that mission editor. Add to that that there is a mod manager included with it as well. And with the, the structure, the skeletal framework of the game itself, I believe that modders are going to be able to really take the game in some new directions. Not just in the, the, the game itself, while I'm sure there will be modders out there who can improve things, add new units, make things more accurate, maybe tweak the graphics or the sound. But I wouldn't be surprised to see some people do some complete overhauls uh, with this uh, as well. Maybe we'll see, you know, sci-fi stuff coming into it. The USS Enterprise warps in. I don't know. People out there who do all this modding work, they blow my mind with some of the things that they can create. But it is nice to see that mods are going to be supported with the game. So when I f did my first video on the game... I did just a, a blind playthrough. I sat down with it and just, just start poking at it just to see, you know, how easy it was to uh, to figure out. I did fairly badly. Now, technically, I won my first mission, but I was playing on normal or easy. I can't remember which. And it was an extremely hard mission to begin with. It was just kind of bombing a coast and then pulling out. Uh, but I did make some mistakes. I lost some ships that I didn't need to because I hadn't turned on my anti-air radar and I was getting lit up by uh, enemy aircraft that were coming in. But it was all user error, right? And now that I've had some more experience with the game, uh, I've played with some submarines. I've played with some battle groups, you know, battleships with cruisers and destroyers searching out enemy aircraft carriers and I'm having to take them out and I'm having to manage the uh, the radar aircraft that I have in the air and the attack fighters that I have coming in and then my own battle group as well as it's pulling through that's having to deal with uh, enemy ground installations that are placed around as well as trying to track down their their battle group to be able to take out their ships and especially the aircraft carrier that was the target in one of the missions that I'm talking about. And earlier I mentioned that this kind of flirts that line between simulation and game because yes, it is, it's gamey, but it's rather accurate in its depiction of uh, all the ships and how they operate. And I think having some foreknowledge of ships, naval combat, how it all works, is definitely going to give you an advantage in this game, just like in Cold Waters, understanding submarines and sonars and active ping and the noisemakers gave you an advantage in that game. If you didn't understand that stuff, you were going to have a very hard time playing that game. Same premise here, and it works both ways. You can play uh, just flat out submarine scenarios where you're going through with your submarine and you're trying to keep your noise down, not do cavitation with your propellers. That's where you get the little bubbles at the back that gets noisy. So you have to uh, go at a certain speed to not create that noise. Uh, you have to worry about your own radar, uh, your towed sonar, rather I should say, uh, and the the detection radius that it has and it's this whole cat and mouse thing going on you're trying to find the enemy sub the enemy subs looking for you and in that mission when i was playing a submarine duel my submarine versus theirs i was tracking him there for a little while and there at the end i just wanted to see okay how quickly do i get caught if i turn all my stuff on i go active and it wasn't just a few seconds later, torpedo in the water, torpedo in the water, torpedo in the water. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Submarine got hit, sank to the bottom. I was dead pretty quickly. Now, yes, that sucks that I lost, but it's accurate. You're not going to hunt down an enemy sub with all your stuff on active. You're going to try to creep. You're going to try to be stealthy. You're going to look for those little noises in the water and you're going to try to track him down without revealing your position so you can get your torpedoes in the water before his and then obviously be able to take him out and the same thing is simulated there in the the surface level right of the uh, the naval combat 
that you have to be concerned about what radar and what detections going on. Uh, enemy ground installations can launch uh, aircraft after you or they can launch missiles. Your battle group can launch their own missiles back at the enemy. If you turn uh, everything on and just say fire, well, all of a sudden you see all these missiles just, you know, flying off. But of course that quickly exposes your position and you're going to have a lot of return fire coming in. But they do have things like the Sea Whiz and all that accurately depicted in the game. So you can take out some of those enemy missiles as they're coming in towards you. Whole point being is that the, the fog of war is accurately depicted in this game. If you've liked Cold Waters and the way that the Fog of War and the, the accurate combat was depicted in that game, this is kind of like that, just expanded out to include all manner of different uh, forms of, especially naval craft, but like I said, ground and other uh, aircraft as well included in the game. So if you like Cold Waters, you're really going to like sea power because now your options are much more expanded you have access to all the cool stuff like battleships and aircraft carriers uh and or aircraft that you can use to come in and attack enemy surface vessels all this really just awesome shit the caveat is the learning curve is going to be user dependent on how steep it is i wasn't in the navy i was in the marines i understand personal weapon system i understand rifles and machine guns and rpgs how all that works but i don't know near as much about naval warfare and how that operates and it does put me in a disadvantage when i'm playing the game i have to learn okay well what is this radar and what does it look for when should i turn on this type of radar okay well this is a type of sonar what does it detect what ranges does it detect you know what do these missiles hit what are these missiles hit? you know what all the different facets of all the different ships do for example when i'm uh using the submarine and sea power the submarine will go faster as you get deeper because it's able to spin its propeller faster without cavitating due to the i think the water pressure the way the water on it and that's something at first that i didn't understand now i learned that in cold waters but you know obviously it applies to this game as well so it's going to be user dependent you're going to have to take your time if you like naval warfare but you don't understand as much of it you're going to have to you know deal with that learning curve getting into the game the actual controls for everything really aren't that difficult most of it's located across the bottom uh, simply by clicking on the different spots you can adjust things like uh, speed or direction or um the radars that you have active or the different sonars that you have available to you they're relatively easy to be able to determine there's also hot keys for all of these things uh, for example with your submarine you can click down at the bottom to pick what level you want to be do you want to be above the thermal layer below the thermal layer that's submarine crap um, whether or not you want to do it that way or you can use hot keys to manually dive or uh, raise the submarine you can go up to periscope depth so you can look across the surface of the water but but key thing is you have to use this stuff appropriately if you don't you will be punished for it like uh my first time playing it i didn't understand the radar as much what radar i needed to have on what radar i need to have off and the enemy aircraft were able to just pick my ships apart and blow them up because i didn't know what i was doing so there is a a learning curve there's a, a steeper learning curve if you have less knowledge about naval warfare the learning curve to actually doing the game playing the game really isn't that hard you just have to go into the options pull up the menu look at the different keys to do what right the controlling the camera controlling the uh the ships the only one that i found i had an issue with is when you're directing them across your mini map you can set different waypoints for your group or your battle group and for some reason i kept having my battle groups that would run aground and it wasn't going in the direction that i had set on the mini map I still haven't been able to figure out if that's a bug or if that's a me error that I'm missing something. I'm ordering them without ordering them. I don't know just yet. 
I'm leaning more towards that it's user error because I can easily control the ships manually, you know, back them up, turn them, try to get them going in the right direction. But for some reason, something's off sometimes, and I think I have it selected to go towards the mission objective because it seems like it's trying to make a straight beeline path to wherever it's supposed to go without following my waypoints. So I think I'm making an error somewhere there. I'll figure that out eventually. I'm hoping that's not a bug, but I don't think so because I haven't been able to find others having that thing. So I'm thinking it's Giphy making that goof. Anyway, sea power, naval combat in the nuclear age, the missile age rather, is releasing either today or has already released, like I said, depending on when I get this video up. Uh, definitely worth checking out. This is going to be for fans of people who like that... Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of Fleet Series, the Into. Jane's Warfare. Uh, uh, someone will put it down in the comments, but I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. The the Naval Fleet, the old uh, school Naval Fleet game, Cold Waters, things like that. If you like some of those games, uh, this one is definitely going to tickle your fancy. And like I said, it's deep. There's a lot of game there to it. There's a good chunk of scenarios that are already available. For both sides, you can control multiple different nations. And like I said, in the mission editor, the whole world and all the different types of units are available to you. So you can create pretty much any scenario you want. You know, it'll take you a little while to get it all edited there together, but it does seem to be relatively user-friendly with all the different drop-down menus. So you can create your own missions. I do assume that we are going to have the ability to download other users missions so I would expect to see those soon and like I said the mods are going to be what really takes this game to that next level because the modders out there can always improve the gameplay improve the graphics and give us entirely new ways to play the game. All right, that's going to be it for me. Definitely go check out Sea Power. It should be available now on Steam. All right, y'all take care. I'll catch you next one.